right. Um, hello. Um, this is my visual presentation of my observations on the Kern High School District Board of Trustees meeting that took place on October 4th, 2021. Um, uh, the first portion of this is going to be me uh, just you know talking about what I've got on my notes up here on the screen and then when we enter the public commentary side of things I'm going to draw from my handy dandy little notebook here in which I recorded a few of the more um, uh, outlandish examples of the public commentary directed at the Kern High School District so um, just as far as procedural items are concerned um, the district serves approximately 40,000 students within Kern County from ages from grades 9 to 12. It's bordered by McFarland, Wasco, Taft, Maricopa, El Tajon, Southern Kern, Tehachapi, Mojave, Sierra Sands, and Delano Joint Union High. Currently, the five members of the Board of Trustees stands as follows. Uh, Cynthia Brakeman, and this is all in order of the trustee area, by the way. Um, Cynthia Brakeman, who is uh, serving as clerk of the Board of Trustees and is representative of Trustee Area 1, which broadly speaking is the north, northeast, and extreme eastern area of the district. Uh, Jeff Flores, who is acting as president of the Board of Trustees and representative of Trustee Area 2, which essentially covers East Bakersfield. Uh, David Manriquez, representative of Trustee Area 3, which encompasses Arvin, Golden Valley, and, pardon, and Shafter, and wraps around the southern and westernmost portions of the district. Uh, Janice Graves, clerk pro tem and representative of trustee area four, which wraps around the central, northwest, and southwest areas of Bakersfield proper. Um, and finally, uh, J. Brian Beatty, vice president of the board of trustees and representative of trustee area five, which is the southern central area of what might be called Bakersfield proper. And the board meets every meeting, every month, at 5801 Sundale Avenue, Bakersfield, California. During these meetings, they handle everything from public awards to teachers and students to disciplinary measures that have to be approved by the board. Uh, they vote on board business and KHSD policy and also, which will feature prominently in this uh, short video, they accept public commentary as well. Now, uh, this might be unsurprising. If, you know, you've, you've graded my assignments. You could probably tell from a mile away that I was going to uh, choose this archived meeting. Um, I, I chose it because of the stir that it raised. This was uh, by no means the only KHSD board meeting that has uh, gone a little off script, but it is the most recent and probably the most egregious example of how these meetings can go awry. Now, the format of the meeting can be found in the attached agenda. In short, though, this was something, uh, this was what I would call a long airing of grievances of the public bracketed by ordinary procedural matters. The atmosphere of the room outside of the public commentary was subdued, professional, and brisk. It's only really when we moved into public commentary um, that we begin to smell the stirrings of a mutiny. Now, the items on the agenda, of course, uh, that I found most interesting were the announcement of the Kern High School District's response to the COVID-19 vaccine mandate in public schools, as well as the adoption of an anti-bullying proclamation that paid special attention to LGBTQ plus students, faculty, staff, and generally their place in society, culture, and history. Um, that proclamation was probably all the more necessary because of some ugly incidents between LGBTQ students um, and uh, Trump supporting students at Centennial High School, if I'm, if I'm remembering which high school that happened at correctly. Um, but this, this proclamation was probably all the more necessary because of that. Now, it should have been a fairly uh, routine meeting. Um, I, I was thrown for a loop, and this is where we're going to go to my, um, my increasingly frenetic handwritten notes here. Um, I have to say that if I, this, this might be a little too casual, a little too tongue in cheek, but um, if I were to play, um, <laughs> if we were perhaps to put a drinking game together based on this, I might be in the hospital right now. <laughs> um, indeed, we spent, um, me and my fiance, we watched this together and we spent a good two and a half hours um, shouting <laughs> while we were watching this. 
Um, it began, uh, promisingly enough, with an outstanding bit of prop comedy by one Dan Halber, who brought in a lightning rod. Um, I don't know how his prop comic career is going, but he didn't really land the jokes for me. Some people in the audience clapped for him. Um, he made vague allusions to following the money, um, and added special emphasis, like air quotes, around vaccines. And this was a common theme when discussing the vaccination mandate. It seems like um, parents opposed to the vaccine mandate were well organized and came up in force uh, to this board meeting. Um, we moved on to Terry Maxwell, who um, made allegations that the board was not autonomous, uh, referred to Gavin Newsom as a dictator, um, again made somewhat vague allusions to money, 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 and more money. Um, from there we moved on to Dewey Compton, or who I seem to refer in my notes as Patch Adams, as he recommends vitamins, fluids, and a positive attitude um, as a countermeasure to COVID-19. Uh, from there, we quickly moved on to Richard Holcraft, in my notes. Um, I thought he was going to go one way with his remarks when he began by saying that 26 children have died of COVID, which is, of course, a tragedy. Um, and then he uh, proceeded to downplay the deaths of 26 children, so that was a little bit upsetting. Um, from there, we moved on to Brian Carr, probably one of the more outlandish uh, Individuals, not the most, not the most, we have more, um, who asked what is truth, uh, spoke about a spirit of lies and deception and essentially argued that the COVID-19 pandemic was a fake. I, I didn't hit the bingo card for pandemic, but I thought I was going to. That didn't happen. Um, there were a few teachers present, which was distressing to me as future colleagues that I might have to work with some of these individuals. I'm... I'm Maybe this sounds cold-hearted, but I, I am hoping the vaccine mandate drives some of these people away from education. I'd rather not... Uh, uh, <laughs> I'd rather not work with someone that refers to the COVID-19 vaccine as, a, as uh, one Melissa Stonesuffer did, as uh, experimental gene therapy. Um, the next gentleman didn't give his name, but he appeared to be doing his best Alex Jones look-alike impression. Um, we jumped the gun a bit with the next guest, the Reverend Andrew Fraser. Um, in addition to speaking to the, the lie of COVID, he also spoke about the lie of, uh, what do I have here, the redefining of genders. And in general, he, he kind of jumped the shark. We weren't, we weren't at the part of the meeting where the transphobia and the homophobia was supposed to start hitting, but he decided that we needed to hear it now. Um, from there, we went on to a fantastically uncharismatic individual who founded the local Turning Point USA organization. Um, again, these are these are all straight from my notes. I'm I'm trying to be as objective as possible with this um, with this assignment. Um, let's see. We've got. Oh, this is um, is this where the meeting? Yes, this is where the meeting went entirely off script. Um, Alex, I didn't catch her last name, but. Um, this is where the board tried to steer the meeting back to, um, uh, back to public commentary on funding. They had 15 minutes allocated for each topic with three minutes allocated to each speaker. Um, and most of the meeting was dominated by public commentary on these two issues, on just the vaccine mandate, as well as, um, the later proclamation in, in support of LGBTQ students and this anti-bullying statement. Um, the speaker after this 10 minute recess began, I, I was, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I was baited, I suppose. It's not the right way to say it, but I was baited into thinking that they might have a funding question. Um, but it didn't take long until they real, they revealed that they were in fact here to complain about the COVID-19, um, uh, the COVID-19 Vaccine mandate. Um, uh, we have more vague inferences about big money. Um, we have someone speaking to the microphone saying that God told me to look up words like dictatorship mandate and so on and so forth. Um, 
And it's roughly at this point that we move on to the portion of the night where um, the somewhat more uh, transphobic and homophobic members of the community felt comfortable to speak. Um, I'm not going to repeat everything that they uh, lobbed at some of our LGBTQ students uh, or faculty or staff, um, but it was uh, refreshing to actually see someone uh, that wasn't, how should I put this, um, it was refreshing to see someone that wasn't um, regurgitating conspiracy theories about COVID-19 when the NASN uh, rep spoke in favor of the anti-bullying proclamation, which was followed by a few more speakers in favor of it. Um, then we move on to some local religious leaders um, who gave the, the usual address about um, worrying about girls and speaking about biological boys and biological girls. Um, uh, then we move on to Olivia Garrison, who I'm actually uh, doing observation and avid hours with this semester. Um, and her reports of what she heard while at that meeting were somewhat distressing as members of the community referred to her um, with homophobic slurs when she was speaking and sitting down. Um, she recommended that uh, LGBTQ History Month is adopted by KHSD, which was, again, somewhat um, forcefully jeered by members of the community. Um, and here we go on to quite a bit more uh, veiled uh, I don't necessarily want to call it homophobia at this point, but um, there seemed to be quite a bit of should we really be talking about this now going on in the meeting? Um, ultimately, this was all for naught. I mean, in, in the first case, the vaccine mandate is out of KHSD's hands for the most part. Um, and they ended up adopting that proclam the, um, the proclamation in support of LGBTQ students um, by a three to one margin. They did, this, um, they did the same for um, a statement of support for Filipino American history, and that was adopted for um, four to nil. And that's about when they moved on to some uh, complaints about solar, or not complaints as such, but um, how to handle uh, solar generation at KHSD sites moving forward, um, as well as other agenda items. Now, as far as my general impression of this meeting is concerned, if you can't tell from some of my uh, admittedly snide comments about it, um, I I'm worried. Uh, this was this was quite a bit of vitriol. This was quite a bit of quackery. This was quite a bit of conspiracy theories, and a dis distressing amount of that came from members of staff and faculty and people that are that frankly should know better. Um, so yeah, I did not expect that meeting to be as bad as it was. In short, and I know that's a, that's 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 certainly underselling um, how egregious this meeting was, but that's 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 about my take on it. So, I hope you have a good night, Professor, and I I hope you take this um, this somewhat cheeky video in uh, the good fun, I suppose, <laughs> in in which it was recorded. Thank you. Have a good night.